Hi there. This is a course on English medical terminology. This lesson is on the eyes and ears. I suggest you check out this video to find out how I teach this course, how to take it. I also suggest you check out this video on the basics, the, you know, the basic English medical terminology that I use throughout the course, including in this lesson. So get your pencil, keyboard, or stylus, whatever you use to take notes, and after a little guitar music, we'll get started. So the first roots are ophthalm and ocul, both meaning eye. Examples are ophthalmology, study of the eye, and intraocular, as in intraocular pressure or IOP, something that's measured. The next term, opt, meaning eye, or in particular, vision. An example, optic, like the optic nerve. And there are plenty of examples of this root in everyday life. Optics, bad optics. That's, that means, uh, you know, a scene with a bad look to it. The next root, core, meaning pupil. An example, correctasis. That's obviously some sort of abnormal condition of the pupil. It happens to be morbid dilation. The next roots, cara and corn, both of them meaning horn, something tough. Examples are keratitis and cornea, keratitis being inflammation of the cornea. The next root, fac, spelled with a C or a K, the meaning comes from lentil, and it's actually the crystalline lens, which is shaped like a lentil. Examples are phacomalacia, softening of the lens, and this is actually a soft cataract, and aphakia, which is a condition in which one or more lenses are missing due to a birth defect or an injury. The next roots, lacrim and dacry, both of them meaning tear. And that root lacrim is found in real life. Lacrimose means tearful or sad. Examples in medical terminology, the lacrimal duct, tear duct, and dacrocyst, the tear sac. The next roots bleph and palpebra both mean eyelid. Blepharitis and palpebral inflammation are both inflammation of the eyelid. The next root tos, often with the form tote, means drooping. Blepharoptosis is a drooping eyelid. The next root, calas, meaning relax. An example, blepharochalasis. This is a condition in which the eyelid is stretched out because of a disease in which it intermittently becomes inflamed and then, and then goes back to normal. The next root, ton or tone, meaning pressure. Tonometry is measurement of the pressure in the eye, especially IOP, intraocular pressure. The next root, fot, meaning light. An example, photophobia, which is um, high sensitivity of the eye to light. The next root, midri, midri, meaning wide. Midriasis is a widening and opening of the pupil, very large pupil, and this can be the result of a disease or a drug such as cocaine or methamphetamine. The next root, presb, meaning old age. An example, presbyopia, which is old age vision. This is uh, basically farsightedness caused by the loss of elasticity of the lens. The next root, tr meaning turn. Esotropia is the condition in which the eyes are turned in, cross-eyed. And of course, exotropia would be a condition in which the eyeballs turn out, the pupils turn outwards. The next root, strab, meaning squint, and strabismus is squinting. This is what we do when one eye can't focus with the other because of the imbalance of the eye muscles. So. This is what we do. The next root, macule, meaning spot or stain. The macula is a part of the eye on the retina that actually looks like a little dark spot or stain. And um, an example of this from real life is the word immaculate. 
spotless. The next root, ambly, meaning dull or dim. Ambliopia is dullness of vision. The next root, aqua, aqua, meaning water. The aqueous humor is a part of the eye. And of course, we know that word, uh, we know that root, aqua, from so many words in, in uh, everyday life, aqua, aquatic, aquarium. The next root, core, meaning enclosure. An example, choroidopathy. And this is a disease or an abnormal condition of the layer in between the retina and the sclera, the sclera being a hard part of the eye, and that is a root that we will also see when we study the integumentary system. The next root, cycle, of course, meaning circular. An example is cycloplegia. Plegia, we've seen this root before. It means paralysis, and it is a paralysis of the intraocular muscle. The next root, glock, meaning blue-gray or blue-green. An example is glaucoma, which is an eye disease in which blue halos seem to form around sources of light. The next root, goni, meaning angle. And a gonioscopy is the examination of the angle, the anatomical angle between the iris and the cornea, which is also called the iridocorneal angle. The next root, scote, means darkness. An example, scotoma. This is the um, loss of vision in, a, in an area within a larger healthy or good area of vision. Moving on to the ears now, this root audi, meaning sound. And of course, you often use the word audio simply to mean sound. An example in medicine is audiometer, which is an instrument used to measure a person's hearing. The next roots, cusis, oat, and or all meaning hearing or ear. An example, presbycusis, which would be the loss of hearing associated with old age. Otoscope, um, an instrument used to do a visual examination of the ear. And oral discharge, which would be a discharge coming out of the ear. The next root, sera, meaning wax. An example, ceramen, which is a fancy word for earwax. The next root, salping, means tube, and we will be seeing this root again when we study female anatomy. An example is salpingopharyngeal, that is the auditory tube that connects to the throat. And the next root, tympan, meaning drum. A tympanostomy is a small incision in the eardrum in order to relieve pressure. And in real life, you probably know that the timpani is a drum often used in a symphony orchestra. And let's look at a few more terms of interest, such as cilia, which actually comes from lower eyelid. Cilia are hair-like, very small hair-like structures or organelles that are found throughout the body, including in the inner ear. And a structure found in the middle ear, the malleus, meaning hammer. Apparently, it is uh, something like a hammer-shaped bone. And um, a word from everyday life is mallet, hammer. It comes from the same root. Another term, mastoid, as in mastoid process. It's an area behind the ear. Mast means breast, or it's a breast-shaped process. We're going to see that root again in female anatomy. And uh, it's important because the, um, the mastoid air cells are sometimes implicated in abnormal conditions of the ear. Iris, this of course means rainbow, and it is the colored portion of your eye. And labyrinth, that word comes to English from Greek mythology. It's any complex series of passages or a maze, and it's often used to describe overly complex processes or administrative structures. In medicine, it's a part of the ear that includes the cochlea, the vestibule, and the semicircular canals. And let's look at these, uh, these acronyms, OD, OS, AD, and AS. What do they stand for? OD and OS are ocular dexter and ocular sinister, right eye and left eye. Of course, dexter and sinister are terms meaning right and left. Dexterous in real life simply means handy, good at something. Sinister, of course, no one likes the left hand, means evil. AD and AS are oris dexter and oris sinister. Right ear, left ear, 
It seems like right eye and left eye, or just R and L, would be so easy to use instead of these particular, uh, these particular uh, acronyms. But I sometimes think doctors like to use gobbledygook for the same reason that other people in other professions do. Anyway, let's look at these words, and let's do something backwards here. Um, instead of me giving the meanings of these words, I will go ahead and give a meaning, and you see if you can find it up here. We'll start with a ridiculously easy one, an ulcer of the cornea, corneal ulcer. And what term would you use for a prolapse, a falling forward of the tear sac, dacrysistoptosis. And let's clear up for once and for all the difference between an optometrist and an ophthalmologist. One of them measures the functions of the eye. We've seen that an ophthalmologist studies the eye itself. We study a root in the integumentary system for a hard portion of the body, a hard outer portion. That's the sclera. What would inflammation of the sclera be? Scleritis. And how about a term for narrowing of the tear duct? Dacryostenosis. We've had that term stenosis, meaning narrowing. How about a term for recording the function and action of the pupil of the eye? Pupillography. We've studied that root graph. And what would be a term for surgical removal of part of the iris? Iridotomy. Do you see a term up there for normal vision? Emetropia. Equal measure vision. How about a term for double vision? Diplopia. How about a term for different vision in each eye? Heteropsia. How about a term when the macula degrades and its function fails? Macular degeneration. How about an eye disease that involves inflammation and discoloration of the retina? Retinitis pigmentosa. How about a term for loss of sight in half your field of vision, as if from a stroke? Hemianopia. Half no vision. Hemianopia. a term for abnormal bone remodeling in the middle ear? That's otosclerosis. Um, Sclera, we know, means hard. Sclerosis is abnormal hardening of any body tissue. And a term for measurement of the function and action of the eardrum and middle ear? Tympanometry. How about oversized outer ears? The outer ear, that's the part you see. Macrotia. And how about a term for a birth defect in which one or both of the outer ears do not form fully or do not form at all? Microtia. How about a term for a clear fluid in the membranous labyrinth of the inner ear? Fluid. Endolymph. And how about a term for an extracellular fluid that surrounds the endolymph? Perilymph. Surround. How about a term for a very small bone, especially one of those in the middle ear? Ossicle. Os for bone, col, a root meaning small. And how about a small membranous sac within the inner ear? Saccule. Cule also being a root that means small. 
How about a term for surgery carried out on the cornea, especially corneal transplantation? Keratoplasty. And how about a term for inflammation or infection of the middle ear causing a persistent discharge? Suppurative otitis media, middle ear. And this is a condition that may have to be treated with a mastoidectomy. So there are some terms and some roots to get you started on a study of eyes and ears. I'll see you in another lesson.